I have a new patient. This is a TurboVac 50 turbo molecular pump. This pump was discarded some time ago, but the previous owner does not exactly know why. He suspects that it might have a bearing issue, but it's uncertain. In today's video, I will attempt to investigate the issue with this pump and see if I can address all the problems. It is the same model I'm currently using at my vacuum chamber, so that's very convenient. If I don't get this pump up and running again, I can still use it for spare parts. Since the rotor was freely spinning, I decided to just turn it on. It did not produce any unusual sounds and smoothly reached its maximum speed. However, the pump had a lingering odor of old oil, reminiscent of a bellow hose that has been connected to a rotary vein pump for a while. Hence, I decided to open it up and assess the internal condition. After removing the lower part, you can see that there is visible corrosion and some contamination on this copper part. Inside the casing you can see even more contamination. And after removing the rotor and the stators, you can see that there is old oil residue. What I think is interesting is that the rotor was balanced by drilling at the top and at the bottom, not by using screws or laser balancing. I think it's pretty evident that this is an older pump. I completely disassembled the pump and cleaned all the components with petroleum ether, isopropyl alcohol and subsequently distilled water. With everything thoroughly cleaned, it's time to reassemble the pump. I have decided not to disassemble the rotor and take off the bearings. I've tried to remove these nuts here, um, but they are uh, screwed down very tightly. I don't know the torque spe specification, um, but I can't get them off and the bearing feels fine. I don't feel any roughness, so I think uh, I will just try to keep it as one piece and I've simply washed the upper part of this rotor here. There are three different types of stators. These three types here, uh, the one on the right goes are the ones that go on the bottom. This one here is the middle area and this uh, type of stator here is on the top. Okay, uh, I forgot something, that's great. I thought I would could do it after the fact, but I can't. There is an o-ring which goes inside uh, this part here, around the shaft, so that's what I'm going to install. I think the easiest method to get this o-ring in is to put it right here, which is the surface that seals inside the rotor. Okay, I think we can now put it in the housing. For some reason the rotor was binding. Not quite sure why. Okay, I know why it was binding. I just reviewed some of the footage from this disassembly. This ring right here with a larger width is not the top one, but the second one from the top. And that explains uh, why it was binding at these status right here. So now if I assemble everything it should work. I now push on the top stator. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and it still spins. Great. Then there is another o-ring which sits down here around the shaft. Then comes this mysterious copper piece right here which I just cleaned. As I've said, if you know what this is, let me know in the comments. I have no idea what it is used for. It's not spinning with the rotor and there's no pickup here which might get some signal from 
from this copper piece, so I'm yeah, I have no idea what it is for, but we will put it back. Then there are these spacers. And lastly comes the sir clip here to secure the rotor. Okay, great. Now we can put in the bottom part. The bottom part right here also has an o-ring which sits in this groove here. All the grease I'm using is this Apieson ultra high vacuum grease because all the o-rings are on the low vacuum side or the roughing side, so it shouldn't hurt. Before I spin up the turbomolecular pump for the first time after reassembling it, I will uh, check for any leaks using my helium leak detector I repaired in an earlier video. And I'm just amazed at how much use I've gotten out of this piece of equipment since I uh, repaired it, or basically cleaned it. We will pull a vacuum on it, uh, spray some helium around the joints and flanges and see if we have any leaks. That looks great. I can't see any leaks. So I think we're ready to spin this turbo up. I have a T-piece connected with my pressure gauge and I'm reading it out with my Python script for my pressure gauge controller. And first we will turn on the roughing pump, let it run for a few minutes and then turn on the turbomolecular pump and look for weird noises and see what kind of pressures we can reach. Okay, uh, it seems like the pump is running fine. I don't hear any weird noises. I don't want to uh, leave it running for too long because I don't have a fan installed currently and I don't want the pump to get too hot. Um, that will be the next project probably, 3D printing a mount for a fan and installing a fan here. We've reached a pressure of 9.5 times 10 to the power of minus six millibars, which is, I think, okay. And yes, other than that, thank you a lot for watching. A small note while editing the video. After the pump ran for a while and then stood for a bit, you can once again perceive an oily smell, albeit much fainter than before. Nevertheless, I will likely disassemble the pump again and attempt to fully dismantle the rotor. I suspect that old oil or grease might be present in the ball bearings and slowly disperses when the pump is running. Whether this attempt will be successful will be revealed in an upcoming video.